Hi. A very good evening to you. Welcome to Articulate Design. Now, I think my colleague spoke to you yesterday on the phone and worked out a few details and came to an understanding of what it is that you're looking for today. You mentioned you were a little bit apprehensive and perhaps uh, not accustomed to buying a luxurious or a high tailored suit. Rest assured, you are in the safest of hands. We have been tailoring for 131 years. And if you've seen me before, welcome back. If you're new here, then enjoy your stay with us. I have been head tailor for 17 years and take enormous pride in my work. I have absolute certainty that we can find the right style for you. Now, could you explain to me what the occasion is for and if you have any thought or idea as to what kind of look you want to convey. Okay. If it is a wedding dance. Okay, a wedding ceremony as well. Are you getting married? Okay, all right. All right, now, we don't need to talk budget. So worry about that after. Let's not even worry about it at all. Pretend that money doesn't exist in this store. We design and specify the right suit for you. Okay, I think it is important to understand what kind of fabrics we might want to be working with. And don't worry if you feel uh, blank-faced when asked about what kind of fabric would you prefer. We are the experts here. So we can talk you through some typical fabrics, what we would expect to see in a higher-end suit, a heavily tailored suit. But that's not to say that we immediately discount a suit based on its material. If it works for you, it works for you. I myself, uh, I'm very prone and uh, very keen on almost a full polyester suit. Polyester uh, makes up maybe 90% of the suits in the world. It's cheap, it's plentiful, it's very tough, very hardy, very hardy material. It's breathable and it's light. Now, not everyone likes polyester. I'll give you an example of a polyester suit. So instead of trying to imagine we have something tangible. Now this is a poly mix and it's one of our Royal Ascot suits. So this is on the lower side of the poly mix, but it still feels luxurious. It still feels well crafted, but the suit is light. If you're going to be dancing, I never dance personally, regardless of whose wedding it is. But if you're going to be dancing or sitting down to a fairly lengthy dinner, polyester is one of the best choices you can make because it is light. And more importantly than that, it's breathable. Now we're not talking 
breathability in the realms of linen or cotton, but compared to something like a tweed or a wool, you'd be surprised how many suits are made up from a wool or a tweed base. We think tweed and we think back to um, you know, the 80s or the 90s and a stuffy professor wearing it. Uh, tweed uh, in the 90s and especially uh, the early 2000s saw something of a relaunch. It was thrust onto a pedestal, of, a silver pedestal of, of grandeur. And has almost become the epitome of style. If you... Uh, have told my college lecturer that, that he would be cool all these years later. I think he would have refused to believe me. Nevertheless, uh, if you're looking for a lightweight but durable suit, polyester is probably the way to proceed. Um, we also have, I mean, we sell everything. Given the nature, I wouldn't recommend a woolen or tweed suit. Not impossible. We can get a nice tweed mix that would lighten the suit a little bit. Um, but given the, the nature of the event, I think uh, polyester is probably the way to go. I can also show you something called goes. Now, this is often confused for plaid or tweed. I even had somebody call this tartan at one point. Um, viscose is actually a substitute or substrate of uh, rayon, which is taken and made from wood pulp. Viscose, it's semi synthetic, feels very luxurious, fairly light, again, not as breathable as polyester, but does have a beautiful finish to it. Um, viscose was actually used as a silk alternative. In the 1800s, that's where it found its roots, and now finds its way into uh, many common designers make use of viscose. Karen Millen, as an example, is a British designer. Um, she loves viscose, and you'll find viscose being used wildly uh, throughout some of her offerings. A viscose suit will set you back a little bit more, but we're playing the money doesn't exist game, okay? Now, before we actually go into suit selections, and to be clear, are we looking for full suit, as in jacket, waistcoat, pants, okay, and a, something like a plain white t-shirt. T-shirts? Shirts? <laughs> okay, good. We like to have fun here, don't worry. Please, get comfortable. It has been known that individuals have even found our measuring and suit profiling to be somewhat relaxing and we encourage that. Getting the right suit should be a pleasure and something to look forward to. It shouldn't be a burden. It shouldn't be, oh, I have to get a new suit. Okay. We want to understand you. We want to tailor the selection around you. Okay. Before we can do that, I need to get to know you in terms of your dimensions. And that isn't as it sounds, I assure you. <laughs> we use a uh, haber tape measure. Haber are a long-standing manufacturer and you could easily use a tape measure that fell out of a Christmas cracker. 
but I'm a, a man set in my ways when I find a tool or a product that I like the feel of I will continue to use it um, I'm not adverse to change but if something works it works now what I'd like you to do is just stand with your arms out as if you were pretending to be a tree I'm not sure if you were ever fortunate enough to play a tree in your school play but it's an underrated role okay now we're measuring fingertip to fingertip here good good and one of my many talents is storing uh, measurements in my brain and I don't need to write down every time I take a measurement it's something that my mentor adamant with and I really struggled with it when I first started tailoring I, I kept confusing inner leg outer leg um, was it this was it that and it's something that I was a little bit frustrated with a long time ago but it's now a skill and a part of my brain that I've developed and can enjoy and very grateful for because more seamless. Now, let's be going to the shoulder to fingertip. And I can measure and switch seamlessly between uh, centimeters and inches. A little conversion in my brain starts taking. And again, we double-take every measurement and then we're mirroring this measurement with this measurement because, believe it or not you would be surprised how often people have albeit very slight differences in arm lengths especially from the armpit to the shoulder sorry, to the, to the elbow you, whoever, do not wonderfully normal normal just being about 50 percent okay now i'd like to take a measurement of your neck and quite often we see if somebody's buying a suit or especially a shirt for themselves the neck size is where they will go wrong most often and it's something i hear myself saying over and over but I can't emphasize it enough. You never want to be pinching the skin. You see no overlap on my neckline. It's because the shirt fits very snugly. It's not restricting my breathing. Um, but quite often, I'll see guys and girls, non-binaries, come in looking for what they think is a nice fitting shirt. They get home, they do up the top button, and they come breathe which uh, it's an easy mistake to make but it's not one that we're going to make so let me just pop this around your neck and I'd just like you to breathe in for me please good just hold it one second okay and now breathe out Okay, and now just continue to breathe normally for me, please. Okay. Now there's a slight change, um, you know, when we breathe in, our neck can expand a little bit. And we like to account for that. We really promote comfort as well as style. There is no point. And looking fantastic for everyone to see if you were walking down a catwalk 
and everyone looks at you and sees you for nothing more than that minute, that one minute, fair enough. You can wear something that isn't comfortable because all you're selling is the wow factor. Now, as far as I'm aware, you're not walking down any catwalks. You're going to be at a social event. Perish the thought. And there's more than just the first impression. The first impression almost takes a, a backseat to the lasting, the longer term impression of how you are. Are you comfortable? Are you constantly doing this with your shirt and your tie? Or are you sitting comfortably with a quiet elegance a professionalism to the suit that just screams well tailored that's what we're going for and that's what we will accomplish okay now it's going to take your waist this is imperative that you just continue to breathe normally and I'm going to let tape measure just move with your breath so we get a nice comfortable measurement good have you uh, eaten today have you had a meal today good I always like to measure after a full meal because um, quite often we get individuals coming to see us first thing in the morning, they haven't eaten, they haven't even drunk anything and they're missing water weight from sleeping, we sweat when we sleep and it gives us an unrealistic result or at least a very temporary result. We want these measurements to be you at your most bloated as inelegant as that sounds but it's important we leave nothing for chance but equally we don't want you to be looking like you're in a poorly tailored suit until you eat there is a middle ground and we will find it now your chest please Good. Good. I like to measure elbow to wrist. Now, I'm quite partial to an elbow patch on my suits. It's typically only seen on tweed, but I've been known to stitch more than a couple into uh, even a silk suit some stylists would say is sacrilegious and I would say which one of us is the master daily okay elbow to wrist Good. elbow to wrist good wonderful need to get shoulder to shoulder just a bit off to the side a little bit here wonderful and I just need you to hold still a little bit while I take it across your shoulder please good very good chest, waist, arms, shoulder to shoulder. Now we just need to get the legs measured. Okay. And this is inner leg. Down to foot. Okay. Good. And the other side. Again, just relax and
very well done you make for an excellent mannequin <laughs> okay I think I have what do we need I'm just looking at the proportions this might be a silly question but do you happen to know if there is a theme or a color theme been selected almost always by the bride uh, or brides um, you think blue okay blue we can work with here's what I'm thinking I want you in. I want you in the waistcoat. I think the waistcoat is a big yes. For some people, the idea of wearing a waistcoat feels unnatural. It feels excessive. But I would contest that once you have worn, and had the honor of showing a waistcoat. You'll be a convert for life, especially on a white shirt, a nice blue waistcoat will be very striking. And I wear quite a lot of blue myself. My uh, wife assures me that it brings out my blue eyes. Um, the wife always knows best. Okay, let's um, let's look at a couple things. We'll also get you a nice blue tie. We might go off color with a tie. Like we might even go off color with a waistcoat. But right now I'm thinking blue Italian leather belt. Okay. Let's start with the Armani suit. This is an Armani suit jacket. This is an off navy. Two buttons. in your size it's what we call the two and four you'll find four buttons for the rest and two to buckle we like four and two our money have always loved four and two some do four and four Rarely you see two and two. Four and two for me feels comfortable. It's elegant. It's not trying to make a statement by wearing two two. If you're new to wearing a suit um, or don't particularly care, you'd be wondering, does anybody actually pay attention to how many buttons you have on your wrist? Uh, yes, is the simple answer four for me is baseline it's fundamental but it's offset a little bit by the two on the suit I really like it here my new suit jacket we also have a beautiful little waistcoat to match And on the waistcoat, you will find the four buttons. Again, the contrast to the two on the suit. Um, when they're all buttoned up, the waistcoat is just poking through the suit jacket. And this is a beautiful, beautiful material. 
double white handkerchief on both the suit and the waistcoat and again single color with the tail we do have a multi color when I say multi I mean dual color so you might have a blue on the front and a kind of royal blue on the back that could make for a nice kind of turn of the waist um, quite eye catching you won't really find that as often with Armani they're usually straight down the middle uh, boss are very similar um, if you went something a little off track you might find a little more flair some would argue to make up for the uh, lack of style but who am I finished with the blue pants I think this sometimes the first we pick is, is our best bet I think this could work very nicely for you I'd like to see you try these on with a white shirt um, I'm thinking if it's going to be quite warm for you This is a Louise Ferrat pattern shirt. Now this doesn't have cufflinks. It is no cufflinks. And sometimes I think that that's a nice contrast to wearing a suit. If you feel uncomfortable going to a wedding in a suit, losing something like cufflinks can just take that tone down just a little bit takes that intention down a little bit I think this will look nice I think here we're definitely on to a thing of beauty that could work very nicely for you that is the Armani with the Louis Farad shirt I showed you the polyester Royal Ascot I sold a Royal Ascot suit Ooh, a little over a year ago to an individual and they reported back that they absolutely loved it their wedding went particularly well um, perhaps as an alternative I mentioned the two color waistcoat you can see at the shoulder you have the two tone so your front is actually quite a a deep blue almost navy color spin of the heel and you're looking at a, a much brighter blue that could be combined quite nicely with the suit jacket the white shirt and the blue pants and it just adds a little touch of flair to the overall ensemble Sometimes flair is good. I'll show you the Royal Ascot that I mentioned before. Exceptionally well made poly mix. well 
its light. The inner finishings, of course, Royal Ascot design. A solid suit and one that has stood the test of time for a long time with us here. Um, because the, the Royal Ascot is um, patterned, I think the plain waistcoat wouldn't really blend as well. Um, I don't tend to mix the Armani's much with the, the Royal Ascots, but we could be absolutely wild. And go for the red Victorian waistcoat. Now, I agree, this is a little, a little loud, perhaps. This is a silk waistcoat, and the red would actually contrast in the most perfect way. Well, this is actually a four off button. Off button meaning they don't sit right center, they sit off center. Now this is actually, uh, oh, it's by a designer called Koof Andy. And this is one of the few pieces we have of his work. But it's very well made. And again, Dual tone going from the red to the black. Black being, of course, the original and with the tail as well. Black was the original waistcoat. Um, it's what everyone wore. It was black and it was silk. And it was nothing else. Thankfully, with time comes variety. And with variety comes perfection. No for the red. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the Kufandi is not for everyone. Sometimes not for anybody. Now you did say it was blue, but you didn't seem entirely sure. Perhaps as a backup, I'm going to go for the custom tailor. Now, custom tailor is a, a third party contractor that we've been working with for a very long time. They work with some of our more prestigious brands, prestigious materials. This is pure silk in our lining. Um, and it actually comes as part of uh, Allure Tailoring, by one of our partners. And it is exceptionally well made. One of the finest poly suits you will ever come across might not be the right choice for you on this occasion but again two and four it fits well it has that grey check pattern it just sends any outfit off Masterfully. The first one, the Armani one. Okay, sure. I think it. I think it's a good look for you. It matched up with the skin tone very well. The waistcoat. Do you want the single color or the second I showed you? The single color. Good. I mean, that's as the suit is sold. And while I'm a huge advocate for variety and mixing and matching to, you know, achieve the 
desired results. The soup was designed with that flavor in mind. Um, it's rare that I, I, I divert away from that, but I thought this was an opportunity for us to at least explore the idea. Good. Now, a tie. Now, this is dangerous because you are in uh, a two, two-tone suit. Your jacket, your waistcoat, and the pants are a slight off color. So we could get away with a blue tie, but I think it would be too much and the tie would probably get lost. So I'm thinking black charcoal. I'll show you the blue. All our ties are silk. In fact, I was wrapping this tie when you arrived. This is a baby blue and white check. And there's something about a silk tie that just has a way. level. I think this would look perfect on you in anything but the suit. <laughs> it's just, I think it would be a little bit too much. I would recommend a bow tie. And we can sell you the, the cheaping, uh, and we can sell you the cheat version. Clips. This is a beautiful two tone. I have worn this very bow tie on numerous occasions and it always, always becomes the talking point of the entire suit. Oh my god, love the suit and that bow tie. You'll hear it all night long. It's a talking point. And it's actually. Really, really nice textured effect. And elasticated for the neck. I think, however, something like, uh, I think something like this would be better suited. Now, black and gray ties, especially with the actually a little bit more complex than it first looks. If you look at the tie from a distance, it looks like a very regular office tie. But when you're up close and talking to somebody, the detail, the alternate little circles. This tie is actually handmade, believe it or not. I think this this is the tie for you, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll show you one more. This is, um, this tie actually would blend into the suit to the point I think it might be, it might get lost, but it is a beautiful material, absolutely beautiful. This is 100% silk and it's an Italian silk and it actually comes from the same manufacturer as the belt I will mandate you take, but I have the perfect belt for you. I'm assuming you'll be wearing black shoes. Okay. Okay. Now, I upset some people sometimes with my 
no choice because I won't wear anything that isn't leather and I won't wear anything that isn't Italian. This is made in Milan and they ship to us and only ship to us the embossed buckle single The inner belt is actually a very, very dark, almost black leather. And the reverse is the baked dark brown leather. I think that will set the suit off perfectly. It might, it might clash a little bit with the black shoes. What we'll do is we'll get you to come back for your final fitting bring the shoes with you we'll look at the belt if the and it's a very dark leather it's dark dark brown it's heavily tanned i think it might just be the perfect offset offsetting color is important because otherwise we get lost in the suit the waistcoat will pop the eyes belt could actually pop the shoes because of this light contrast I think it might work well if it doesn't I might actually sell you slash give you some of our tan shoes or we'll switch the belt to a pure black look or maybe something something funky but I think uh, I think to make a final decision on that we need to see the final article okay but definitely the blue armani the blue waistcoat white shirt no cufflinks okay i think we are almost done i just want to make sure that It looks right in my mind. Okay. Now, so what we'll do, we will go in, tailor the suit to your measurements. It'll be a perfect fit. If you uh, aren't coming back for two or three weeks and you anticipate on, you know, attending a, an all-you-can-eat pasta convention, um, let us know so we can make the necessary adjustments. <laughs>